In chapter one, we talked about those different symbols that we could write in an equation without having it exactly equal. So we had the option to be less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. And those were called inequalities. So an inequality is a number sentence with one of those symbols. So we can throw it into a general equation, a number sentence, and read it as we know we should. So that first example, negative 4 is greater than t. So t is less than negative 4. Another way that we can read it. So we want to determine whether each number is a solution of x less than 4. So for that first example, is negative 2.7 less than 4? Yes, that's true. What about for b? Is 6 less than 4? No, that's not true. Is 4 less than 4? No, it's exactly equal to. So as we look at the next set, how is that different? Now I have the option to be exactly equal to. So what's going to change? Part A. Negative 2.7 is still less than or equal to 4, so that one works. 6 still doesn't, still too big. But now what about for C? Is 4 less than or equal to 4? It's exactly equal to, so yeah, that one works now. So there is a big difference between when we have that little line of equality, could be exactly equal to, or just an inequality less than or greater than. So, take that try. Determine whether each number is a solution of the inequality x greater than 3. So, what about for 2? Is 2 greater than 3? Nope. Not going to work. What about b? Negative 5 is not larger than a positive. That's not going to work. 3. It's exactly equal to 3. It's not greater than. We don't have that option. What about zero? Zero is not larger than three. 15.4, a decimal, still works. It's larger than three, so yes, that's a solution. And negative fraction, again, the negative is never larger than a positive. So no, in that case, that one doesn't work. All right, so as we're looking at graphing some of these solutions to an inequality, we first have to talk about, well, how many solutions do we have? So, what are some of the solutions for x less than 2? So, what are my options for this guy? I couldn't choose 2, but I could choose 1. I could choose a negative 3, 0, 1.9, what else? 0.45, I could pick minus pi. I have a lot of different options, and this list continues on. So, how many solutions do I have to an inequality? I have infinitely many that can satisfy this thing. So, there are infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions to this inequality. Since we physically can't list them all, writing them out on a list, it's helpful to make a drawing that represents all of the solutions. So, here we're leaving a lot out. If I draw a picture, we're encompassing all of them. We call those things graphs. Okay. So we have one variable involved. It's one dimensional, so it can be graphed on a number line. If we have more dimensions, we need more planes. So an inequality in two variables can be graphed on a coordinate plane. Because right now I have a number line, one dimension. If I introduce another one, now I need another axis to look at. So, two variables can be graphed on the coordinate plane, or the Cartesian plane, if you're used to hearing that lingo. So, we're going to take that example, x less than 2. We know what some of the solutions are, and we want to graph them. Okay, so let's do that now that we've got some number lines to draw on. Again, one-dimensional, we only have that one variable involved, so we can draw it on a number line. So, what does it mean when we're graphing x less than 2? So, we're trying to graph all numbers that are less than 2. <laughs> Excuse me. All numbers less than 2. So, can we include 2? Is 2 less than 2? No. So, as I look on my number line, 
I'm going to have a curved bracket or an open circle if you're used to those to indicate that I'm not including 2. It can exactly be equal to 2. And we also want anything that's less than that. So to the left, 1 is less than 2, 0 is less than 2. Anything to the left of that guy is going to satisfy that inequality. And you can always check. If you aren't sure if you drew it the right way, pick a number that's in here. Negative 4, for example, that falls in my solution set according to my picture. Is negative 4 less than 2? Yes. So we did shade or draw the line in the right direction. Okay. Next one. X greater than or equal to minus 3. So all numbers greater than or equal to minus 3. So can I plug in minus 3 exactly here? Yes, because I have that equality option. So I'm going to have a closed bracket on minus 3 telling me, hey, I can include minus 3 because I have the equality case. And we want anything greater than that, so to the right. And again, if you weren't sure, pick a number in here like 2. Is 2 greater than or equal to minus 3? Yes, so we went in the right direction. Now if we have a compound inequality, I'm going to combine both of these. x has to be both less than 2 and greater than or equal to minus 3. Because again, how could we rewrite this inequality with the same meaning, reading it in the other way? Minus 3 is less than or equal to x. You can see that's where this guy is coming from. So if we combine those two or we overlay them, so we're going to be sandwiched in between. It has to be less than 2, so I can follow that guy all the way down. And at the same time, it still has to be greater than or equal to minus 3. So our solution set now is a lot smaller window of combining these two. So you can see where the overlay is. Here's my minus 2 if we line them up exactly. And here's my minus 3. So if I'm looking at a compound inequality, sandwiching it between two values, we have a solution set that looks like that. So again, what does it mean? That open bracket at 2, so the open one at 2, means that 2 is not a part of the graph. We don't include it because we don't have the equality case. But the bracket closed at minus 3 means that minus 3 is a part of the graph. I could plug it in and satisfy that equation. Same story for the last ones. All right, so one for you to try. Graph those three inequalities. So graphing the first inequality, what is that one looking like? Are we going to have an open or a closed bracket in this case? So we're going to have closed because I have that equality case. Could be exactly equal to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or... We can include anything that's less than that to the left of that guy. So 4 is going to be included, 3, 2, 1, 0, anything that's negative. So our solution set looks like that on the number line. What about for the second one? Minus 4, greater than minus 4. Again, we're going to have open because I'm not including minus 4. And we're picking anything that's larger than that guy. So we could have negative 3.99999, really, really close to minus 4, but we're never including minus 4, and again, anything bigger. So now, again, if we're compounding these, what's it going to look like? We could rewrite this guy as what? Minus 4 less than x, so you can see where our compound inequality is coming from. So if we're overlaying these, if I'm sandwiching it between 5 and minus 1, 2, 3, 4, Again, closed on 5, open on 4, those haven't changed. I'm choosing any x value that's in between there. And again, if you aren't convinced, if you drew it correctly, pick a number that's in between there. I'm going to pick 3. Is 3 both less than or equal to 5? Yep. And greater than minus 4? Yes. So we drew our picture correctly. 